welcome to Edinburgh, the Athens of the North, some have called her. To those of us who live here, she is a classical city in her own right. For 500 years, capital of the proud and ancient kingdom of Scotland. It was a king from Edinburgh who became the first sovereign of the United Kingdoms of Scotland and England. History is built into the sharp outline of Edinburgh's royal marble. This is a very European capital, a city of laws and learning, of doctors, and books and beer. A city of merchants, of commerce, and of banking. But at every turn, there are memories of days when a Scottish Parliament sat here in Edinburgh's High Street under the shadow of the Crown Tower of St Giles. Scotland still has its own laws, its own way of life, its own turn of speech, its own traditions, its own culture, and its own church. Sir Walter Scott was an Edinburgh lawyer. Robert Louis Stevenson lived here. Robert Burns came to her drinking house and her drawing rooms and wrote some of his best-loved songs here. The past seems alive among the blossoming trees of Princess Street Gardens. The National Gallery houses one of the finest art collections in Europe. Rembrandt, Titian, Degas and the Royal Scottish Academy shows work by contemporary Scottish artists. For 25 years, people from all over the world have come together under these northern skies to enjoy music and drama at the annual international festivals. Nothing is ever so theatrical as Edinburgh herself, the castle perched in its rocky crag, the spirit of romantic legend riding high into the March gloaming. But a city is living people, and Edinburgh folk, like people in every European town, rush home from their work, perhaps go to a cinema, a theatre, or the Usher Hall. This concert hall, given to the city of Edinburgh by Andrew Usher, was opened in 1914. And perhaps more world-famous orchestras have appeared here than in any other hall in Europe. Our orchestra tonight is the BBC Radio Orchestra, conducted by Malcolm Lockyer. And as it plays un bon, une arbre, une rue, last year's winner for Severine and Monaco, and the overture to the Eurovision Song Contest of 1972 from Edinburgh, in which the United Kingdom entry will be sung by the new seekers, we send greetings to you wherever you may be, and to give you a warm welcome to Bonnie Scotland in person, here is our own Bonnie, Miss Moira Shearer. gentlemen, and welcome to this, the 17th Eurovision Song Contest, coming to you from the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. In a few moments, artists from 18 countries will be singing the song of their own country's choice to decide which one will receive the Grand Prix of 1972. The contest is being transmitted to 28 countries, and via satellite is being seen as far away as Brazil. A reasonable estimate might be that perhaps something like 400 million people could be watching at this moment. And I would like to extend to you all a very warm welcome to Edinburgh. The order in which the 18 songs will be sung has been decided by drawing lots. And they will be voted upon by our 36-member jury who are watching the contest from the Great Hall of Edinburgh Castle but I shall be giving you more details of the voting procedure later in the programme. Bonsoir à tous, et bienvenue à ce 17e concours de la chanson qui vous parvient depuis le Asher Hall à Edinburgh. And Moira Shira repeats her welcome in French, the other official language of the European Broadcasting Union. And I know I'll be saying what a lot of you are thinking if I say how good it is to see Moira Shira back on a stage. She was born in Dunfermline in Fife, just across the Firth of Forth from Edinburgh. Was, of course, a prima ballerina with Sadler's Wells, later the Royal Ballet, and uh, became an international film star overnight in 1947 with her film The Red Shoes, which made every little girl in the world want to be a ballerina. She's now uh, married to Ludovic Kennedy and lives in an old manse in the borders. 
Her three daughters go to school in Scotland. Her son is at art school in London. She still uh, keeps a link with the live art, serves on the music committee of the Scottish Arts Council. Now, may I remind you that there is a scorecard on page 59 of your Radio Times, so why not compare your score with that of the jury? And also may I remind you that each song is uh, allowed exactly three minutes, and if it exceeds the time allowed, it is disqualified. The rehearsals have been very happy. There's been a very competitive and friendly spirit here in Edinburgh for the last three days. The sun's been shining, and at last, the moment of truth is almost here. Du concours de la chanson Eurovision 1972. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to hear the first song in the Eurovision Song Contest of 1972.